And we're back Woo! with our first official episode of The Battle. Yes. Wow. It's a good one, too. Steering Cleveland, oh, The Battle. And we can thank you for that. So glad. I have to I'm say, this. this is the first battle that I really care about. Really? <laughs> hey. Rick's on I board. It. I get it, Rick. I totally get it. I, I didn't. I didn't mind the Black Sabbath one. Oh, that was fun. But, but uh, was, of this, what was that? Right. What was that one? I, I like this one. Black better. Sabbath albums. What, out of all of them, or was it out of all one of against? Them. What was the best Black Sabbath album? Yeah, of course, yeah. I won with Paranoid. Oh, wait, yeah. wait, wait, hold on. No, you didn't. I hold did. on. <laughs> what would you pick as your Beck as your? <laughs> what would you pick as your best Black Sabbath album? I need time to think about that. Paranoid. It's just fine. We got no, no. Paranoid. No, no, it's Mike not, said it's completely. But wait, paranoid. before we start this battle. Yes. I just, I went back and looked at one of your older shows. Uh Guilty Pleasure Bands. Can I give you mine? Absolutely. First, in one minute. By the way, this is Mike Trevisano, ladies and buddy. This is the Mike (laughs) Trevisano, the only one left. (laughs) (laughs) Well, not really, because... There's others. Another Mike Trisano, his Just son take is a okay. compliment. Okay, and right. run he doesn't it. own a restaurant. <laughs> Mike okay. Yes. Welcome back. You were. He was on the main episode yeah. of Starry to Cleveland. If you haven't seen it, go watch yeah. it. Yes. Now he's in the battle. He's going to get smoked by me. But here, go ahead. <laughs> Apparently not, because wrong. From what we were discussing earlier, <laughs> it's three to one. Yeah. <laughs> How is it he right? No, he's oh, not right. <laughs> but anyway, but he always thinks he is. All right. What, the we guilt, just let him go. Guilty pleasure, baby. Yes. Please. I enjoyed that very much. Oh, so I want to give Rick did too, because he even added his. He did. I saw that. Yeah. I did. But I, I want to give I want to give you my see what you guys think. Okay. Absolutely. Now please I give you my top three, but my honorable mentions. That's fine. Moody Blues, Fleetwood Mac. Great. Oh, and great. great. Two great bands. Because mm-hmm. then you were all growing up rockers and metal heads, and you were, you know. So when you get older, your musical taste kind of evolve. Right. You appreciate right. certain things. Better. And you heard it growing right. up. Steve Nicks was hot. Yes. So <clears throat> number three, Huey Lewis in the news. Great awesome. band. Absolutely love Huey Lewis in the News. Great band. Back when I was younger, wouldn't even think about it. No. Blues Huey. Number he, two. Number two. Trivia question. Uh-oh. Or not even a question, but just a tidbit. He played harmonica with Deep Purple. Blues Did he Huey. really? Yes. Huey Blues Lewis Huey. Did. Yes. No kidding. Yeah. All right. Blues take that Huey. with you. Good, interesting tidbit. Yeah, take that with you. Good was it Deep Purple? Me. I thought it was Thin Lizzy or something. No, like it was that. Deep Purple. Was it? Deep I'm pretty Purple? sure. Either That's one okay. doesn't matter. It That's might have been pretty Thin Lizzy, tidbit. but I'm pretty sure it was Deep Purple. Good tidbit. Ooh, wait, maybe I'm full of crap. What else is new? <laughs> Shack fact. Fruit <laughs> fact check. <laughs> he's he's fact checking right now. While he fact checks, it might um, have been Thin Lizzy. Now that you're saying. Go ahead. Well, he's farting. Okay, okay. I, we'll lose, right? Yeah. Then four non blondes. I oh, think I love their song. I they, no 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 I no, love no, Linda no, Perry. no. Linda Perry, in my She's opinion, great. might be the best female vocalist I have ever heard. Ooh, she wrote good songs for Pink. I, I'm dead serious. She wrote serious. for Cheap Trick. She, she did. is yeah. a phenomenal singer, and you got more than one song. They have one song, which is probably my favorite song of all time. Of all time. So what is going on? <laughs> I'll tell you what's going on. Four Nine Blinds, and then she had a couple solo stuff. She has a solo album yeah. called In Flight. Okay. Very moody, very she, dark. But she's a great songwriter. Great songwriter, but she's a Super great soulful. singer. She does have a powerful voice. Yep. All right. And uh, number one, Duran Duran. <sighs> Love him. As a bass player. I, oh, I, yeah, forget yeah, it. Uh, you can't Amazing. It. He's the best. Yeah. John's I mean, great. unbelievable. See, that's why I don't, I wouldn't as them younger, as guilty pleasure because they're, but see, because I mean, we made fun of them. In that's high why I, That's yeah. why it's a guilty pleasure. You get older. And they were a chick band. band. I remember a girl crying in art class because I made fun of Duran Duran to her. Well, right back in the day, it was all your baby Judas Priest, Ozzy Osbourne. It's like Duran Duran, you know. But now yeah, you get older, you're like, holy musicians. crap, you know. Yeah, yeah John a lot Taylor's, of good yeah, catches on. But yeah, John, it. just they gave me respect Andy when it, the Power Station I mean, had Andy and John Taylor right. in it, and I loved that album. So I just wanted to go to my guilty pleasure, my all time, all time guilty pleasure. <clears throat> Peter Chris Soul album, but we'll save that for another day. Yeah, please. <laughs> well, thanks for coming, Mike. We will save, save that we'll for save another it for day. We'll save for the day called Never. 
Yes. <laughs> I don't care. We're, We're going to have a kiss round table. And you better It'll invite, be invite me because he, be he needs at least one representative. It's not a bad album. It's just... He needs one representative here, and I will sit here, and I will defend that to the day I die, that it was not the worst solo album. I'm with you. Thank you. Because you know we're going to do and this is why. this is what I say. The Gold Top and Peter Chris's solo album. You promised. This is what I think. All right? It's the best solo album because it's the one that's least like Thank Kiss. It, they stepped out of what they normally do. Right. And did something make it like a kiss record. It's, it's not a terrible record, but compared to... For in my opinion, H compared to the other three, we get it. We get it. No, it's stop. the Gene worst Simmons of the is four. the worst of all. Oh, how dare you! Gene Simmons was the worst. It's the third, but it's not terrible. Yeah, Listen to it again. Terrible. Yeah, I tried. Re it's got a lot of Beatlesque type Peter, stuff in there. Okay. Okay. Cast the thousands. Peter, Peter and, Chris, a lot yeah. of rhythm and blues and soul and jazz. And I mean, Nielsen all over the on. place. The musicianship and the, the just the, the, the okay. He likes four nine. We'll say. Let's talk about. <laughs> Iron Maiden. <laughs> oh, well played. Good one. All right. No offense. We're here for Iron uh, Maiden. Man. Iron Maiden Bro, is our battle today. All right. <laughs> yes. Yes. Mike chose Iron Maiden. He, Mike did cho yeah. choose Iron Maiden. Choose is in a word. I know this. Chose is. No. You When you can't read, you get it wrong. It's probably my all-time favorite band, so yeah. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Over Huey Lewis? Again, all time, yes, over Huey okay. Lewis, over the Four Nine Blinds, over <laughs> Huey Peter Chris Soul album. Who... Huey Lewis, who played <laughs> harmonica, 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 Ben, ben Lizzy. And I think he played on Four Non Blondes' album. He may have. <laughs> there is some harmonica in that. That must be why Listen it's to good. the opening tune. Yeah, Huey Lewis, Four Non Blondes. It's flipping great. Okay. All right. Hey. Anyway, so let's talk Iron Maiden albums, our favorite Iron Maiden albums. Um, our we favorite say or the it best? three times fast. It's Go the ahead. same. Because my favorite is the best. Are you going first? I am going first because I have the oldest album. Ooh, or don't you? Ooh. I do. <laughs> and I'm going with the I'm classic like here's Number of the Beast. And you, and you can't go you, wrong, but you can. But yes. Listen, I agree with you. My I first introduction to Iron Maiden was that album. Same. same and here. I will tell you this. I did not get into Iron Maiden in high school and stuff of that nature. No. Uh, I just didn't get it at the time. I thought they were just trying to work off the whole satanic thing. But I've grown to love these ba this band and their musicianship. Uh -huh. <laughs> Amazing. And after listening to all the albums, this is my favorite. Combined. Uh, you can't go wrong Who with is any of their albums. Not you. But you, you this, no, you, you were number two. This was my Who was number six? <laughs> okay. Anyway, so let, let me tell you about this album. Oh, oh. here. He's got to spill his facts. I'm going to drop some knowledge. He's going to kick his new knowledge. Okay. All right. The Number of the Beast is the third studio album. That's correct. By English heavy metal band Iron Maiden. Uh-huh. It was released March 22nd, 1982. I remember what? God, I remember. I remember. Well. 40 years ago. <laughs> I just remember my parents yelling at my brother to turn it down. It was go ahead. certified platinum mm -hmm. in the United States. Beautiful. This was the first feature vocalist, Bruce Dickinson. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it was also the last with Clive Burr. Clive Burr. Mm -hmm. Great. And we'll get to that later, but go uh, ahead. And of course, it was painted by Derek Riggs, which is... He's known for yes. the Eddie paintings. And you always have to look for his little, little insignia. Yep. It, yep. The symbols on every album. He's got so many things in these paintings. You can sit there and stare them for hours. Yep. Yes. So. Just stop hitting it with. Oh, I'm sorry. Was I banging it? <laughs> Let's you, go through the tracks real quick. <laughs> Sounds like my problem. Invaders. Right? Great. Children of the Damned. Great. Yes. Prisoner. Great. Yes. 22 Asia Avenue. Great. Arcadia. That's what Arcadia. I said. Acacia. Acacia. Whatever. Number of favorite the, albums. We, we were talking about Duran Duran. I was yeah. thinking Arcadia. Go okay. ahead. Uh, it's Acacia. <laughs> yes, you're right. Number of the Beast, the song off the album, next to the sixth song, Run to the Hills, which is the song on the album, as far as I'm concerned. Run for your no, life. no, it's not the song off the album. Quiet. <laughs> I'm it's speaking. Not your turn I yet. have the talking stick. <laughs> you're right. Gangland. Sorry. All right. Sorry. Gangland and Hollow Be Thy Name. I mean, come on. Paint the Tip, this is a great album. <laughs> it's a great album. It's a great album. How would best. be that name would be the song off. It is a great song. Gangland, I could probably live without. That wasn't probably. And Invaders. Invaders is okay. It's a good opening track. Nah, it's probably the weakest opening track of any other albums. Boy, you met your match, Bond. Eh, he doesn't always talk. Go ahead. <laughs> Speak, <laughs> preach, young man. But anyway, so this is my pick. Iron Maiden, Number of the Beast. It's a good pick. It's I mean, a great pick. Do you remember buying that album and then go, I'm going to go get the other ones and go, wait a minute. Listen. Who's there's, singing this? There's something better. Something's, just remember when you first hear that 
Hey, well, look, <laughs> look. <laughs> we, 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 okay. Paul Diano, Running Free, great song. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, Paul Diano. He'd never be confused with Bruce Dickinson. No. 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 But come, tell me when you didn't first hear that woe to you. Oh, you absolutely. Know, oh, Earth and Sea. No, never be compared to. No, I mean, come on. It, it gave you goosebumps. Those first two albums are flipping phenomenal, though. They're good. So that's we my pick. Paul. Sorry, Paul. We Number of it. the Beast. <clears throat> so let's go to your pick, Mr. My Trevisano. Pick, my pick. Was my pick. And that's a good pick. It, it is a good pick. It is an excellent pick. Your pick was my the pick. The problem is, is that they have so many great albums, it's hard to pick. It's, now, it, see, it was hard. All right. My pick is the follow-up to Number of the Beast. Peace of mind. First yes. one with Nico McBrain. First who one with Nico McBrain. Is who, amazing. Who is not only amazing, you put that first track of Invaders, you put the first track on this where Eagles there. He came from he came from two great bands. Right off the bat. You're flipping. Now we speak, before we get into it, is it true? I heard a rumor that Nico was in the devil costume. On one of the videos for never heard Number of the Beast. And I don't know. It that. could be. Okay. It's I possible. know he was never in a Pat Travers band. He was. And then he was in Trust mm-hmm. off the heavy metal soundtrack. This, I think, took that and just upped it yep. a notch. And it was right when MTV took off. And then you had Flight of Icarus. Great song. I mean, just Great song. blew you away. You had the Trooper, which is like their... Great song. That is like their... It's a great song. That's like their anthem, it's basically, so when they play it. It's, so it's, you know, the Trooper. Can't go on. And my favorite Iron Maiden song, Revelations. Okay. Okay. Oh, it's a great song. song. It's my favorite Iron Maiden song. Isn't Die With Your Boots On on there? It is. <laughs> Die With Your Boots On. You can't... You yes. can't. And also has my favorite deep track of Iron Maiden, Still Life. It's a fantastic a deep track album yeah. from top to bottom. Not written um, by Steve Harris either, I, I, I mean, which is odd. You're right. Well, not, what? Still life. Still life. It's was Murray right. and Harris. Murray and Harris. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. But and Murray only like wrote like ten songs basically. You know, very rarely did he write a song. Yeah. You know, Adrian Smith was a, was a, was one of the main writers yeah. too, and he actually have you heard I'm some of huge... Smith's stuff with Richie Kotzen? Pretty yes, good, man. Like it's fantastic. Pretty good. I have yeah. Smith Kotzen. Yeah, pretty yeah, good. But this this. I'm, it's a great album. I just it. You know, now see, the thing is, is that, you know, you asked me that 15 years ago. I've always said, peace of mind, peace of mind, peace of mind. You ask me this now, I hesitate because yes. cause you start, you start thinking. other things. There's, there's other albums out there. I'm like, and I, and I used to think, eh. Now I'm thinking, no, this is in my top five. Yeah. So I'm going to guess what yours is. Go ahead. Well, let me drop the rest of the knowledge on. Oh, yeah. Okay. Drop your knowledge. That's not right. a lot. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Spill it all over. It's the fourth studio album, like Mike said. Uh, it was released in May 16th, 1983. Also in platinum. Uh, this is after at December of 82, Clyde Burr ended his association with the band due to personal and tour problems. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like he was a bad drummer either, no, but he's no, no. no Nico McBrain. I'm sorry. No, Nico McBrain is amazing. That was a, that was uh, a This was the first awesome upgrade. of four Iron Maiden albums that were not named after a song featured on the album itself. Mm. Interesting. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, great. let's go down Where Eagles Dare. Okay, mm-hmm. we said great intro. Yep. Revelations, amazing. Flight of Icarus, blow your balls off. Yep. Yeah. Die With Your Boots On. Great song. The Trooper. Probably one top three for me. Yep. Uh, still life, like you said, deep cut. Great deep cut. Quest for fire, sun and steel. Those the quest for fire and sun and steel are the weak links of the album, and but they're, they're still not, not bad. that bad. Right. <laughs> they're, they are the invaders in gangland of number exactly. of the beast. Yeah. Okay. And okay. to tame a land. To tame a land. Um, underrated. Great. I mean, it's a underrated. great album. It's a, I mean, there's um, there's no denying it's in the top three of Iron Maiden. Mm-hmm. So since I took your original, that's okay. I'm gonna you, guess, you earned it. I'm going to guess. It's between two. I'm going to say somewhere in time. Bam, Keith. Somewhere, somewhere in, in time. time. <laughs> this I actually went to this concert. Me too. With wasted, wasted open, and I went out and bought wasted stuff right after I heard them because they didn't. were good. <laughs> but. This album is stunning. Oh, okay. Now we skipped we skipped an album. Which yes, was we did, um, we did. And, we, and that's a damn Power good Slave. album. Power Slave. That's a damn good album. One of my is, favorites. It, it's stunning. It's a great album. Two minutes to midnight. The clock is set 
the opener on that. Ace is it's high. Milliken. And Ace is high. Yeah. But no, somewhere in time, uh, just talk about album covers you can stare at forever. Oh. Yeah. All the different there's a there's a list of Easter eggs for that album cover online and it's stunning. And it's a, it goes on. That's forever. what I was gonna it is. say. It's such a great we're... album. Like I mean, somewhere in time, of course. Um Another great somewhere opener. in time. Another great uh opener. Wasted Years. That is my favorite Iron Maiden song. Really? I love it. And Adrian Smith wrote it. Yeah. But you know, that was the thing with them. Like I like I had we were talking prior. They had two front men, Steve Harris. Mm -hmm. Probably my favorite metal bass player. Oh, mm -hmm. and Nico metal. Brain, metal bass player, being my favorite metal drummer. The thing with Nico, you can never see him. Mm -hmm. He but was just he, behind the drums. He was just a. But he drums. always made it look effortless. I, and and Steve Harris's showmanship. When and, you see him put his foot up on that wedge, I mean that's that's with the that classic bass guitar. metal stance. Yeah, it, it, and he invented it. Three fingers, four fingers, chugging along on the bass. But he wrote some really good bass lines, uh, uh, aside from his chugging bass lines. But anyway. The Gallop. Um, the Gallop. Um, yeah, um, the Gallop. Um, and um, and yeah. I have yet to see somebody use all four fingers doing the Gallop. And with his running around and his spandex. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, if you're wearing spandex and you can do that, that's impressive. <laughs> that's impressive. Uh, <laughs> Heaven Can Wait. Six. Heaven Can Wait is a great song. Great, it's a song, sea of yeah. madness. Um, Stranger in a Strange Land, one of my favorites. Deja Vu, Alexander the Great. I mean, we have the loneliness of the long distance uh, runner. Runner, thank you. <laughs> but anyway, I mean, great album. Like I said, uh, my brother got me into Iron Maiden with Number of the Beast. Mm -hmm. Then he got this, and I was like, okay, I really started paying attention after this. And then I was in a band, and I always gravitate towards bass players when I'm in a band. Weird how that is. And I like bass players because I respect bass players and drummers. I don't give anybody any shit. Well, I'm glad there could be one bass player here tonight for you. I know, at <laughs> least one. Um, but when I was in a band in high school, the bass player was a huge Iron Maiden fan, obviously. And he said, you have to hear this when this came out. And I said, okay. And he goes, you know, I... My brother said, hey, I'm getting tickets for this show. Invite your bass player friend to go with us. So during that show, the kid sat on my brother's shoulders because he was shorter than the rest of us. But, yeah, we watched that whole entire thing and wasted, you know, Pete Way. Um, I didn't go out and buy anything. Danny <laughs> Vaughn, great singer. I didn't. I didn't great buy name. a single wasted thing. But I did have this T-shirt that I had to have. But, yeah, Thanks, this Sandy. album... Uh, like I mentioned, Power Slave, this, this, and this. In my opinion, the four best Iron Maiden albums. I'm sorry. That's where I go. No, oh, it's great. That's great. You want to drop some knowledge? Uh, you took most of my knowledge away. Well, I'm smart. Uh, Somewhere in Time is the sixth studio album by Iron Maiden. Mm -hmm. It was released September 29th, 1986. Yes. Fresh out of high school. Well, I was still, that I, one was went, still I, was a, I was a junior. I had a year to go. That one was double platinum. So it sold more than these two. Really? They kept elevating and elevating and elevating. They Somewhere in time. Right here, I Power think. Slave, and then they hit that. Yeah. Somewhere in time is the first studio effort that followed the extensive World Slavery Tour of 84, 85. Which was great. Which was physically draining for the group. It lasted 331 days in compromise of 187 <laughs> concerts. Well, you That's know quite what? a clip. The resulting ex exhaustion is credited with the main factor of lack of songwriting contributions from Bruce Dickinson, whose all of his material was rejected by the band. Great um, singer, though. On the other hand, the record is also notable for a fully formed song, finally written by Adrian Smith, who wrote both the album singles, Wasted Years and Stranger in a Strange Land. And he played a gold top. Um, and again, we talked about all the Easter eggs. You can go online and just look at the list of Easter eggs on That's that crazy. album cover. That's what I was going to say. When we're done discussing this, what was the best album cover? cover? Ooh. But we'll, we'll save that because we want yeah. to talk. We'll wrap it up with that because uh, that was like I think that was their introduction to gu guitar synthesizers. Yep. Same thing that Jazz yes. Priest did with Turbo. Turbo, right? Same same year, and everyone was like, "Oh no, they're they're they're, they're wimping out. They're whatever." But not. no, they're, you know, no. they not not a problem at all. And when I when I was referring to albums that. That thought were okay, but then I appreciated it when I got older. Was uh, Seventh Son of a Seventh Son, which Great came album. after this one, right? 
I was not a huge fan of it when it came out. I don't even know why. I think I was expecting, you know, the trooper or something. Right. And I was like, eh, it's okay. No, it's in my top five. It's still oh, a great album. I think it's just a, like the artist girl. You I, grow I with think it. it's mm-hmm. phenomenal. Their newer stuff, I like it, but it's just not the same. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll listen to it like the, the latest album, Sujutsu or whatever it was mm-hmm. called. Mm-hmm. It's got some pretty good stuff on it, but oh, every sure. song has got to be I mean, eight nine minutes, and sometimes yeah, it gets Iron a Man. little. Which was one of the reasons I really didn't get overly interested in them. Yep, when I was younger, was Same. that the songs were just so long. Yeah. You know, I'm like, okay, well, I mean, I I was used to Van Halen, ACDC, Kiss, right. Cheap Trick, three, three minutes, minutes three and a half, four right. minutes, you're done. But these were going on and on, and I didn't I didn't appreciate it probably till this album, mm-hmm. and that's when you know, yeah, when I was when I first got made aware of Iron Maiden. Again, I just thought they were trying to be cool with the whole satanic thing. Little did I know they weren't. It was nothing. They were taking a piss For out of The it. furthest, no. furthest yeah. thing from, the, yeah. from that. You know, same, that's why I didn't like Motley Crue in high school because, you know, I was like, they're just trying to get attention with the Satan shit. But, then but then after listen listening to it, to it, then you listen to it and say, yeah, hey, like, yeah, real deal. Yeah, these these guys are amazing. You listen to uh, it and then you realize that Iron Maiden is just a medieval fair for your ears, right? <laughs> Absolutely. That's yeah. that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Took the words right out of my mouth. The first song as a young man, first song I ever learned to play on bass was Wasted Years. It's a great song. But as an older man with a studio, and I've done some recording and things, I hate the production of that album. I, I do it. like the bass sound, though. The snare is way too loud. But it's I do like the bass snare. sound. It's on the this snare album. show. It, it needs to be remixed, I think. Well, I'm sure they've done that already. No, they haven't. Oh. Even the remasters are like the remaster, what are you doing 2015 that remaster. Now? It still bothers you. <laughs> it's so loud. Is it it's Saint like, Anger bad? What Saint Anger drums bad? I don't know what that means, yeah. but don't it, don't bother. It's yeah. just uh, the production to me seems thin. Like they well, could have done Birch, a and Martin Birch always had, a, I thought, a thin production. But but anyway, who do I know? So I'm we no producer. got the three albums we've chosen. Would you have chosen one of these, or would you have chosen a different one, right? Um, my two favorite, and I'm not even an album guy, you mm-hmm. know, like I'm not a person like you guys that listens to the complete albums and know all the B-sides and stuff. When I was a kid, I had Live After Death, and I just listened to that over and over and over that again. That was a hits album, basically. But, mm-hmm. you know, as you get older and you start listening to albums, you want to put an album on and go work in the garage or whatever. Mm-hmm. My two favorites are Peace of Mind and Power Slave. Okay. So it would have been one of those. Right there in the so if I were there with you and he already claimed peace of mind, I'd be standing there with Power Slave. Gotcha. And Power Slave. And we would have covered all four of the best yeah. albums in yes. my opinion. And I still would have won with Number of the Beast. <laughs> <laughs> what are your what, what are your opinions on the Deano albums? Because I like them a lot. Completely oh, I don't di- think they're bad. They're, they're a different, different, sound. different band. Different, different sound. Band. Yeah, a little punky, I think, little I think they're a little uh, different killers. I, I mean, I love the first album. Um but I was an Adrian Smith fan. I think I could tell when he yeah. came in between the two albums. Yeah, yeah for and sure. He was on Killers, and Killers and, is a great album. And he listened to Bruce Dickinson. I mean, Bruce Dickinson, Dickinson, I know, I mean he's one of the best vocals. The first two ever. albums, when everyone they were does, their, does their top band. five, yeah, everyone does their top five Maiden, even on that, that metal show. Those two first two albums were all, in all three of the host top five. Sure. Mm-hmm. And it it, They're not as smart as us. <laughs> yeah, I love. What I, are they I, doing I, now? I do love them now. I'll tell you. You know, you'll probably. I'll probably get shit from you. I might get. Well, You're not gonna get, get any shit from, from you, me because I don't care. But is go that ahead. he got a bad? You can't take an iconic band, replace the singer, and still call it Iron Maiden. I think Blaze Bailey got the shit beat out of him, and he wasn't that bad. No. For the Alps, live, trying to sing, run to the hills, the trooper. Yeah, yeah. I get it. Now, I think the X Factor overall was not a bad album, if you would call it something else. Sure. But you're, you're, you're thinking, just like... The uh, Elder, Ripper from Kiss. It's no, not we're not a, talking it's about not a, that. It's not a terrible album. It's a great it's a album, but it's album. not a great Kiss album. It's a terrible album. You're absolutely right. I revisited no, that too. There's yeah. things there's like it's not that bad. It's Growing up, you're like, oh, it's horrible. Sucks. But then you get older, you're, you're able to look past that and yeah. appreciate yeah. what it was. Yes, Scott, so, look past anyway, it. Anyway, um, but uh, X Factor. But it, it goes back to like when um, Glenn Hughes sang for Tony Iommi, and he made the Seven Star, and he the the the, 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 the production company said, 
because Tony Iommi did not want Black Sabbath name on it. Mm-hmm. And they said, you're not going to sell nothing. Put Black Sabbath on it. He didn't want to. So everyone went in there expecting Black Sabbath. Yeah. And everyone booed and hissed and pissed well, and moaned. And there were there were a lot of bands that came out with a new singer. And the albums are fantastic, but people weren't accepting of the Right. Singer. You know, uh, like Deep Purple. Purple. For example, they went through many singers. Yeah, come and taste the band with David Coverdale. Born again is a tremendous Sabbath oh, album. It's it's really ridiculous. It's one of my favorites. <laughs> it, it seriously is. Yeah, you know, I mean, Zero the Hero, huh. one of the best riffs ever. It, it seriously is. And yeah. uh, um, but going back to singers and stuff, I just you know, Ripper Owens when he replaced Halford, right? yeah. he did a phenomenal, oh, he's great. phenomenal job. And I I get upset when people talk about greatest vocalists of all time. Mm-hmm. Who, who gets mentioned? Dio, who's my favorite vocalist of all time, Dickinson, and Halford. Well, guess who sang all three perfectly in different types of bands? Ripper Owens. He needs to get uh, mm-hmm. some attention for being one of the best metal vocalists ever. Heck, he did Abigail, for crying out loud. Yeah. Well, we're going to get him on the podcast. Oh, we'd love to have him. No, we're, we are. We're going to get him on. Good. I've already talked to him. You did? So, yeah. Uh. Oh, well, that's, that's happening. And you can Good. be here for it. I would love to be here yeah, for that be because for I'm a it. huge fan of his because he does not get the recognition I think he deserves. Ripper's great. No, he's, a, he's great. an amazing singer. He really is. But in summation, Number of the Beast is the best Iron Maiden album. Wrong. <laughs> Wrong, but tremendous. It Seven does. Son of a Seven Son des- des- deserves a little, little, you know, I don't know. Now, before we, before we totally wrap up, yes. best cover. Best cover. What, what, best cover. What album do you think is the best cover? My opinion. There's so many, hard to choose, but I think the one I keep going to is Killers. Same. Right? I would say Killers is probably their best album. Cover. Album cover, yeah. This is a this is I mean that's so what he there. transformed there's into. So what he many. Is. I mean, that thing you can like look. That's look fantastic. And look. That's a great album cover. You know, but uh, it's you know. I mean, that what I remember having the T-shirt of Killers. Even before yes. I knew Iron Maiden was, I thought it was cool. It's it just probably the best with, with the, the hand of Eddie reaching up yes. with the axe. I think. And the, like when yeah, I think was, of Eddie, I yeah. think of that Killers album cover. Yeah, now with the slick black hair and the first one, or you know, and then he became this, and then yeah, but, that, and but but he's a robot. Here. Yeah, but it's just I love all the detail. Yeah, you know, Power Slave, same thing. You just look at the detail. Yeah, you know, oh, yes. yeah, Riggs was well, amazing. All, they're they're all, they amazing all got tremendous yeah. detail. Yeah. But I think for me, I think it would be Killers as the best Iron Maiden album. I think we agree. Hey, we agree on we something. We do agree on Holy shit, I think, I think it's wow. time to wrap it up then. Yeah, we can. Go out on a oh, good no, we got we, we have to add one thing. Yeah. Favorite Black Sabbath album. I, I, don't, I need more time. No, you don't have any more. <laughs> I need more time. You're on the spot. He said Paranoid to me he earlier did. before we filmed. I'm pretty sure he said Mob Rules. Oh, you know. All right, that's it. You have to separate. You have to separate. Ozzy, Dio, and I'll tell you what, I'm a big Tony Martin era fan, too. Oh, okay. Okay. Cross Purposes, Headless Cross. Those are some tremendous albums. Who was on Eternal Idol? I was going to say, he was Eternal Idol. Eternal Idol. Even Ray Gillen, I think, sang on that tour. Oh, really? Yes. One of the best vocalists of all time, in my opinion, but Bad we're lands. not going there. I don't think Bad he was lands. on your list, though. He wasn't on my list, but he is one of my favorites. One of my favorites. Yep. He wasn't well, on your list, though. He wasn't, but he's one of my favorites. Mm. So, uh, you know what? In that Black Sabbath episode, nobody mentioned Master of Reality. Great album. That, you know awesome that might be album. my favorite one because it still it has, is volume four. It has After Forever, which is one of the best. Just keep naming albums. After Forever, that's his favorite. Um, Into the Void. Into the Void. Supernaut. After Forever. After Forever Supernaut is tremendous. was on Supernaut. volume four. And oh, was it? Well, yeah, I thought that was on Master four of Reality. Is really my favorite. It's my favorite Ozzy album, but I think really? my favorite Black Mob, Sabbath my album. My favorite Sabbath song of all time is Heaven and Hell. Great. I love I, the Dio years, so I, I might do. have to say. I'm a big fan of the Dio years. Either Heaven and Hell or Mob Rules is probably the best Sabbath album. Thank you. Just say Mob Rules and we win. I would probably, if I could, because Heaven well, and Hell. Well, that episode's song, over and I won that episode. But, so. You didn't. But, but I, you know what? Sign of the Southern Cross probably just. Come on. Takes, Yeah. <laughs> All just, right, I think we're done here. <laughs> well, that's about it. I think we're being attacked by Nazi zombies <laughs> <laughs> from Rick's favorite band. <laughs> There's a pack this of coyotes in the garage. Some more. Well, I mean, well, you're always welcome back. We're favorite always... Judas Priest album. No, let's keep going. I oh, can yeah, talk about we can this do all that. night, man. That'll be the next episode. <laughs> oh, man. All right. But we want to thank you, Mike, thank for you. hanging out with us. Absolutely.
You came in a solid second place here tonight. I'm glad you were here. First place. And uh, I would, I I would, relinquish, I I would have, relinquish my win to you. Yeah, because he was going to pick the same one and, and, yeah. and, he, and said that he was either going to pick He's this or power wrong. slave. It's okay to be wrong. Not, uh, no no one else chose number of the beast. No. Even though I can't fault you for it because it's, no, it's a great album. But, we all know it's a great <laughs> album, but it's just not the best album. First day right at Cleveland. <laughs> That's oh, Keith. Man. That's second place, Scott. Oh. And that's Mike Trevisano, ladies and the Mike Trevisano. The, Mike the one and only. And that's our producer, Rick. We'll Ciao. see you at the next episode. Grease for peace. And die with your boots on. <laughs> From the coast to gold Across the seven seas Traveling on Fun away, but now it seems I'm just a stranger to myself and all the things I sometimes do. It isn't me, but someone else. I close my eyes and think of all another city goes by. Funny how it is You never miss it till it's gone away And my heart is lying there It will be till my dying day So understand Don't waste your time